Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial equation. We've done similar problems before. We've done the sixth power. We've done the, I think, fifth power, fourth power, maybe third power. And this is the eighth power. We skipped the seventh power because it's not that interesting. The eighth power is very interesting. But using the same ideas, you can also solve pretty much any case. So I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method is actually something that was suggested by my viewers um, previously, something that I haven't thought about. So I learn a lot from you guys anyways. So let's start with the first method and the credit goes to all the viewers. Okay, so for my first method, I'm gonna do the following. I'm going to divide both sides by x minus one to the eighth power. So I'm gonna write it as x to the eighth divided by x minus one to the eighth and that equals one. Obviously, if x is equal to one, it's not going to work because 0 equals 1, false. So we know x does not equal 1. That allows us to divide both sides by x minus 1 to the 8th power. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these two together with the same exponent. So kind of write it like x over x minus 1 to the 8th power. That allows us to manipulate this in a complex sense. Complex sense meaning using complex numbers. So we said that x does not equal 1. Under those conditions, we're going to solve it. So this quantity, whatever that is, to the eighth power equals 1. We're going to go ahead and write 1 as a complex number. And that can be done because 1 on the unit circle is basically represented by the point 1, 0. So the argument, the angle we're going to use is going to be 0 or 2 pi. But I'd like to use 2 pi. So it's not 0, but it's the same thing. So I can write this by using Euler's formula, uh, cosine 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. This is a really interesting identity, by the way. Any complex number can be written as cosine alpha plus i sine alpha multiplied by the, uh, the modulus, which is the absolute value. But in this case, our absolute value is equal to 1. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the eighth root of both sides to find x but first we're going to find x over x minus 1 so the eighth root of 1 I know some people aren't going to like this notation because it's kind of ambiguous but we mean all eighth roots of this complex number and there are eight eighth roots a complex number has eight eighth roots a real number has only single one let's go ahead and call this z z for complex and we're basically looking in other words we're looking for eighth roots of unity. That's what it's called. You can also look it up. Roots of unity is a very interesting topic. And basically what happens is you have the one and you kind of divide it up into eight pieces on the unit circle. If it's the fourth roots, then you divide it up into four pieces. Make sense? Okay, hopefully that'll make sense because now we're going to start talking about angles and trigonometry. So the first thing we have to do is divide the argument, the angle, by 8. That's how you can take the eighth root of a complex number. But that's not the end of the story. There's going to be more. So, But if you divide 2 pi by 8, you get pi over 4. And again, modulus is 1, so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to. It's 1, so it's good. And this is going to be the first root. Now you can go ahead and call this w0, or some people call it um, c sub z sub 0. Let's go ahead and call it w0 for the root. So we are looking for x, so we still have to find x from here. But let's go ahead and write this in, you know, Cartesian form or just standard form. How do you write in standard form? What is cosine pi over 4? It is square root of 2 over 2. And the same thing goes here for sine pi over 4. So we can write our number like this. But our goal is to find x. So let's go ahead and, you know, isolate this, so on and so forth. And we're going to find the x value from here. So how do you find the x value? You can go ahead and cross multiply. x gives you x minus 1 times this number. And then by distribution, and obviously you don't want to distribute the x because you want to keep it as is. So I'm going to keep it like this. Don't distribute the x and just distribute the negative 1. And also with the negative 1, just keep everything inside the parentheses because we're going to add that to both sides to put the x's together. Make sense? So here's what happens. We're going to put the, these two x's together. And then the 
this one without the x will term on the other side. So it's going to look like this. x times root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i minus 1. That minus 1 comes from 1x equals root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. Okay, then to keep a long story short, from here we're, we're going to get x, which actually can be written as z sub 0, or you can call it x sub 0. That is going to be 1 minus root 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2i. And now the next thing is going to come from the following. Remember the first one we use cosine pi over 4. Now you're just going to add pi over 4 every time. Okay, keep doing this. When you add that, you're going to get cosine pi over 2 and plus i sine pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 is 0, and this is 1. So this is going to give you x over x minus 1 equals i, x equals xi minus i, and then x minus xi equals negative i, and then x times 1 minus i equals negative i, and then x equals negative i over 1 minus i multiplied by the conjugate and you're going to get x equals negative i minus i squared divided by 1 plus 1, which is 2. And this becomes 1 minus i over 2, or you can write it as 1 half minus 1 half i. So that's just x sub 1, another root. And you keep doing this by adding pi over 4, you're going to get all the solutions. And there should be 7 solutions, not 8 solutions. A lot of people think that there should be 8, but there are 7 solutions. Think about y. And at some point, we're going to be getting x value or x over x minus 1 equal to cosine pi plus i sine pi because by adding multiples of pi over 4, you're going to get to it. And this is negative 1 because cosine pi is negative 1 and sine pi is 0. And from here, we get x over x minus 1 equals negative 1 and x equals 1 minus x and 2x equals 1 and x equals 1 half as the only real solution to this equation. There are seven solutions, only one of them is real. Let's go ahead and talk about the second solution now. The second method, the second method, I'm going to show you a graph at the end, is a little different. It's purely algebraic, but it doesn't use complex numbers. We can put everything on the same side and then use difference of two squares. So we can factor it as x to the fourth plus x minus one to the fourth multiplied by x to the fourth minus x minus 1 to the fourth equals 0. This is another difference of two squares, and this can be factored. I'll talk about that a little later. Let's go ahead and take care of the difference of two squares first. This can be written as x squared minus x minus 1 squared times x squared plus x minus 1 squared. Great. Now we got a quadratic, a linear and a cortic, but the cortic can be handled very easily. Let's go ahead and simplify these first. When you subtract, you're going to get 2x minus 1, and this one is going to give you 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. Those are easy to handle. And the other one, this one, we can kind of call this y, and x to the fourth plus y to the fourth can actually be factored. How? By using Sophie Germain. Yes, we've done some videos on it. So we can do the following. Add 2x squared y squared to this, and subtract it. Now, this part, this part, becomes a perfect square, and that is perfect. Yay! That becomes x squared plus y squared squared, and the second part can be written as root 2xy quantity squared. So we get a difference of two squares, sort of, but it's still good enough, and this can be turned into x squared plus square root of 2xy minus, actually plus y squared, and then x squared minus root 2xy minus y squared. Awesome. Those are going to be the factors. And if we replace y with x minus 1, then we're going to get the following. Root 2x times x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared. And I probably have to move this stuff a little bit to the left so that I can have some room here. Oopsies. I don't know why it disappeared. OK, hocus pocus. Uh, this is supposed to be a y, and I want to go ahead and, okay, let me start over here. So I'm going to replace y with x minus 1, right, in both places, and then do it in both of these, and at the end, what's going to happen is you're going to get the exact same equations. I mean, these are two radicals, uh, two quadratics. You can find the solutions. Let's go ahead and focus on these two. This one gives you x equals 1 half, which is the only real solution. 
This one has complex solutions. If you solve it, you're going to get, let me erase these so we can find some room. Sophie Germain, hopefully you already got the idea. Okay, I'm kind of running out of room these days, so I could probably make, uh, need to make a longer uh, document. Anyways, this one gives us x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So it's going to be like my 4 minus 8. That is negative 4 divided by 4. And that is going to be 2 plus minus 2i over 4. And that's going to be 1 plus minus i over 2. Remember, this is one of the solutions we found earlier with the first method. And the others are just going to follow as usual. And this brings us to the graph. Okay, so the graph of these two functions, x to the 8th and x minus 1 to the 8th, obviously one of them is just shifted. They intersect at this point. That point is kind of almost looks like on the x-axis, but it's not. It's not touching because the y value is so small. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.